Hey everybody and welcome back to The History Freak. Thank you so much for joining me on this video when we're going to be talking about Queen Mary II and the Glorious Revolution. Mary is somebody I've wanted to talk about for a while on this channel because I think she's a really underrated queen. It's always fun to talk about the really big characters from history, but I also think it's fun to look back and remember some of the less well-known people, like Mary. If you haven't done so already, now would be a perfect time to subscribe to this channel, and you can check out our backlog of videos on the Tudors, Stuarts, and there's lots of other fun content coming up. Okay, let's crack on and learn all about Mary. The Princess Mary was born in April 1662 at St James's Palace. She was a very important baby, and she was the niece of King Charles II. Her father was the heir to the throne, James Duke of York, and as his only child at that time, she was in line after him. Despite her closeness to the throne, I doubt many people would have thought that she would actually ever sit on the throne. Her uncle the king was, in the year of her birth, about to marry his wife, Catherine of Braganza, and would have been expecting to have lots of children to become his heirs. Also, James, her father, had only been married for two years and would have been hoping for many more children. But as fate would have it, the brothers were unlucky when it came to having children. Charles and his wife never had a baby, and although Mary's mother Anne Hyde did give birth eight times, only two lived long, and that was of course Mary herself and her younger sister Anne. So therefore, Mary always remained very close to the throne. Mary was said to have been reasonably well educated, and clearly she was no idiot. She was described as being sweet and humble, as well as attractive and tall as an adult. She was always popular with the people. She lived with her sister growing up, but the girls didn't spend much time with their parents. Mary would of course love her mother and father, but with little time together the bond can't have been that strong. Part of the reason why the family were not often together may have been down to religion. Always a difficult subject in England at the time. The country was mostly Protestant, but there was a long history of tensions with English Catholics. Anyone Catholic near the throne was generally disliked and not trusted. Thankfully for her future as Queen, Mary was brought up Protestant, but both her parents had converted when Mary was still a young girl. With James being heir and Catholic, he was often away from England as people didn't like and trust him. When Mary was less than 10 years old, her mother died, causing sadness for the young girl. Her father remarried to Mary of Modena, who was not much older than Mary herself. Mary as a young girl spent a lot of time writing letters. She wrote a huge amount of letters to her friend Frances. Frances was actually nearly 10 years older than the child Mary, so how genuine this friendship was is questionable, but Mary was a princess and a sweet girl, so Frances seemed happy with the close relationship. Over time, the letters became intense. Mary would write that she loved Frances and even called her husband. Mary was also jealous of other female friends Frances had. Close relationships with women is something Mary had in common with her sister Anne. Some have suggested that these letters, as well as ongoing intense friendships with women into adulthood, could have meant that Mary was gay. If there was any truth to this, who can say for sure? Maybe, if she had lived in more liberal times and had the freedom to choose her own partner, she may have been more drawn to being with a woman. But she was also very devoted to her eventual husband, so who knows? The letters were often written in character, and in fairness were probably a way to pass the long hours of boredom. She probably should have chilled out on the intensity a little, though. Talking of her marriage, let's look at who Mary was married to. William was Mary's cousin, and also in line to the English throne, but behind Mary and Anne. He was more than ten years older than his cousin, and he was in a position of power as the Stadtholder of Holland. 
He could be a very aggressive leader who seemed to love being at war. He knew that marrying Mary would massively improve his power and mean he had a far better chance of getting control in England, so he was obviously very keen. Mary, it's fair to say, was less happy. When she learned she was to marry William, she cried a lot, and it seems she was still very emotional at the wedding, which must have been uncomfortable for everyone. But despite the tears, the 15-year-old had little choice, and she was married to her cousin in 1677. Mary was to go and live with her husband, and about five weeks after the marriage, they arrived in The Hague. So what kind of marriage was this? Well, I've definitely read mixed stories about how close they were. Some have suggested that William was horrendously cold and mean to his wife, while others suggest they were quite close and loving. William is thought to have had a mistress, but other people have suggested he could have been gay. It seems like there would not be a lot of laughs in this relationship. William was quite serious, and although he had some close friends, it seems many found him cold and not fun. Whatever the dynamics of the marriage, one thing is for sure, Mary was very devoted to him throughout the marriage, which suggests to me that probably he was not so harsh with her as some have said. Unless he was so hard, she was actually intimidated by him, which I feel is probably not the case. I suspect Mary may have just wanted a relatively easy life, and fighting her husband for control was certainly not going to give her happiness. Despite becoming pregnant early, the couple never had a child, which would have caused sadness and maybe this brought them closer together. In 1685, her father became King James II. James was not a popular king, and Mary did not approve of some of his policies. It didn't help that he was Catholic and wanted to rule with absolute power. She wasn't the only one not liking how he was behaving as king, and it seems some powerful people in England were already thinking of who could rule instead. An important turning point happened, when James's second wife, Mary of Modena, had a son in 1688, which was worst case scenario for Protestants. This son, the new heir, would be raised Catholic. Because the Queen had lost so many babies before, as well as the quickness of the birth, there were rumours this baby had been smuggled into the palace in a warming pan, and it was not a genuine child of the King and Queen. This rumour seems very far-fetched, but the truth didn't really seem to matter now. There was no way a Catholic heir was going to be allowed. It seems Mary believed the story, or maybe it was more about power and not allowing a Catholic heir. If you'd like to know more about Mary of Modena and this strange story of the warming pan baby, you can check out my video about them. I'll post a link in the comments. Things had gone too far with James, and he would have to go. William was a strong leader and was so closely linked to the English throne, so he was very interested in how things would develop. He had conversations with nobles in England about the possibility of him invading to rescue the nation and religion. A big added motivation may have been that he was warned the people may take down James even without his help and possibly become a republic. Definitely not good news for William and Mary. Another key thing to be sorted out for William was to really define who would have power if they pulled off their mission. There was no way he wanted to just be the husband of a queen. Mary was the real heir, but she supposedly agreed that he would be the true power. Now, Did she agree this because he put so much pressure on her to do so, or was she genuinely happy to step back? I think that either option could be true but it seems on several occasions she indicated she was happy to step back. On one hand, this seems kind of strange, but maybe the prospect of Queen was something that overwhelmed her, and I don't judge her if she felt that. She seemed to believe that a wife should be led by her husband, and for William to be fully on board, it was important that he was the one in charge. He had support from England and his wife, so it was time to get going. William arrived in England with ships, soldiers and horses. He meant business. James was captured and William was happy to have him leave England for France. William was now in control. 
and this became known as the Glorious Revolution. Mary would join her husband in England, and they would jointly sit on the throne. But after so many years of complications with the Stuarts ruling, there would be some changes. William and Mary would have less power than previous rulers. The possibility of a monarch just dominating the people was not going to happen. In their coronation, they had to promise to stay Protestant. For William and Mary, this would not be a big ask, but it was a way of ensuring the constant problems with the crown and religion would end. Other new rules saw less control for the monarch and more for Parliament. There would also be less access to money and the army. Mary may seem to some like a bit of a pushover, but clearly she showed some strength here. To go against her father was no little thing, and the fact that she was able to step up and perform her duty shows she was not so weak as some have said. But it does seem she was a big overthinker. She was always troubled by the situation with her father, and was in a tough spot because if she looked too happy, she would be judged as a bad daughter. But if she didn't fully support the cause, it looked like she was weak and not supporting her husband. In April 1689, they were crowned together at Westminster Abbey. They had their throne, and Mary was happy to take a back seat. The couple liked to spend a lot of time outside the city at Hampton Court. Mary got involved in transforming parts of the old Tudor Palace into a far more modern-looking royal residence. She was interested in design and was a big supporter of education. She enjoyed exercise and went on long walks. Her relationship with her sister seemed to grow bad. Despite their closeness as children, the situation had changed. Anne, influenced by ambitious friends, was now thinking about her position as heir. And she didn't always see eye to eye with William, which made things tricky for Mary. On top of that, Mary didn't like Anne's best friend Sarah, so the relationship was going nowhere good. When William was away fighting wars, which he often was, Mary stepped up to lead, with the help of advisers. As I said before, the couple never had children. It's quite possible that after her previous miscarriage that she was unable. Being younger and healthier than her husband, it would have been expected she would live a long time, but in fact her time as queen was less than six years. She got the dreaded smallpox, and after quite a brief illness, she died just after Christmas in 1694, at the age of just 32. Despite stories of William being cold to her in their marriage, it's fair to say he was extremely upset and troubled at her passing, suggesting they were closer than some may have thought, unless it was him just feeling guilty. She was buried at Westminster Abbey. William ruled alone until 1702, and then when he died, he was buried with his wife. Mary gets less attention than probably any of the other queens of England, which is a shame because I think her story is one that's worth knowing. Events that took place were really huge, and it couldn't have happened without her. It really was a shame that she died so young, as I think had she not caught the smallpox, she probably would have outlived William and eventually ruled as sole monarch, and who knows what she may have been capable of in that position. Well that's it for this video about Queen Mary II, I hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to put all your thoughts about Mary in the comments, I love to read them. And join us on our upcoming video when we're going to be talking about the younger sister, the woman that would rule after William, Queen Anne.